I'd like to start this video by saying a few words on the channel. This channel started uh, three months ago in June 2021, now um, recording this mid-September. And I'd like to say how grateful I am uh, for all the positive comments the subscribers have had um, in the channel. I didn't imagine I'd get anywhere near this. Um, I was actually making a few videos for the uh, members of, um, of my photo club. Uh, those are the French ones and I thought well while I'm making them I'll make them in English. Anyway thank you very much. Uh, I've also had and that was a big surprise some people who uh, asked to um, donate to the channel so uh, they asked for a, a PayPal link and I have received uh, a little bit of money which has helped to pay for this microphone here our microphone which is now on a tripod with a macro arm and um, Thanks to the advice of uh, Claude from Quebec, um, Canada, who said, get the microphone off your desk. It shouldn't be anywhere near the keyboard. So floating microphone, tell me if it's any better. So now I'm currently saving up to get a colour checker passport because I'm very curious to see how that works with the colour calibration module, see if it's actually worthwhile, whether it, it will bring something um, to an amateur photographer like me, um, see if the changes are significant. So that's my future project. Um, back to this video then, and um, so this one is a simple one, I hope, uh, not too technical, I hope, where I want to do a recap on the scene referred workflow in Darktable, which is the one distinguishing thing from the other uh, software you can have like uh, Lightroom and Capture One and Photoshop which are all display referred to. Darktable that is what it brings to the table. Um, there are a lot of misconceptions about the role of filmic in this and so I'm going to take one photo I'll try and make a recap to see what Darktable is doing, the uh, importance of each um, module, how much time we need to spend on them um, and just yeah, just kind of get everything into one packet and um, that will give an example workflow to everyone uh, which you can, by watching other videos, experimenting, you can expand on afterwards. So there we are, that's the project for this video. I'm Nicholas and let's do this together. Okay, so here's the um, photo I was talking about. This is a cat on a wall taken the, this summer during the holidays. Um, and so the first thing you notice in um, Darktable when you are in scene referred workflow is that there are already some modules that have come into play. Now just as a quick reminder, how do you get into scene referred? Well the preferences here in the light table is this button up here. And to be in scene referred you need to go in the processing tab and select auto apply pixel workflow, workflow defaults you need to select the scene referred and the chromatic adaptation we want to go to modern that's to use the color calibration which is here for the other um, options here I um, remove the auto apply base curve because I'm not using the base curve remove the auto apply sharpen as well because I don't want to use any sharpening by default and uh, the monochrome previews, I don't want them anyway. Um, so just that will get you into the scene referred workflow. And you'll have on your photo a certain number of things here. Now this is not um, straight from camera, it's not a raw file, um, because there's lots of things that have been done on it. Now Darktable promises to do the least possible to give us the basic starting point. Um, you could actually remove them. I, I'll show you why they're there. Um, why I think they're there anyway. Because I could remove Filmic. I can remove the colour calibration. And I can remove exposure. And I've got a weird uh, pink halo now. And I can remove the white balance. And we're very close to... Uh, the photo has been demosaic, But we're very, very close to um, what the raw data looks like. Um, now what happens here you see is um, if it started like this with just the five 
uh, modules. There's four I can't change, I can't remove them. Um, now the input color profile is the one that will actually get you into a, a color space. And the output color profile is the one that will enable you to save to a color profile which is recognized by um, other software. So if you're in JPEG or TIFF, you want to be in a, in a, in a usual color profile, which I have as this RGB. Uh, have Adobe RGB if you want. Um, but you see, between the two, um, now if I wanted to remember which of the modules I needed, well actually I've lost them, I've, I've, they've gone. So I need to remember that there was a white balance. So white balance was there, color calibration was there. You see the fact that they're there to start with, with kind of basic values entered. It's just so we actually know what to do. Eh. I think that's it. There are. And now we've got the picture back. That's kind of a, it's just to help us with the basic workflow. Um, just uh, to explain again what um, scene referred is. Um, scene referred linear workflow has to do with color and luminance. Um, now in the scene referred workflow, the colors are bounded but luminance is not. Luminance can go up to infinity. And the thing about filmic is filmic is kind of the guard dog. It's the exit door, if you like, which will make sure that, you know, if you try and squeeze something large through a small door, filmic will make sure it fits. Take it if you like, the image I like to think of is um, filmic is a belt around around your waist and um, the belt filmic will make sure that your stomach stays kind of flat however much you feed it underneath before filmic with the seed referred um, modules um, you can feed it quite excessively at the most you might have to adjust your belt a notch just to be comfortable but um, unless you want to eat a lorry load of muffins, um, you should be fine. Uh, <laughs> you'll stop before anything goes bad. Um, so filmic is that, that's all it is. So normally we can set filmic once and we're ready to go. Now, um, just to show a quick illustration about this, uh, what I'm talking about, um, so if we take affinity, here in affinity, I have, it's always a bit difficult, this color workspace thing. This is the color workspace in sRGB. So those are the colors that exist. You have to imagine that your eye cannot see any other colors. Now there's quite a lot and it's, it's, it's not bad. But what happens, you see, if I made, uh, if you had an operation and all of a sudden your vision became this and all of a sudden you discovered some new colors um, new tones. Now that would make your life uh, brighter, happier, I don't know, but it would change your life. And that is the uh, REC 2020 workspace, which is bigger in colours than sRGB, which is here. But you have to imagine that this is not all that exists in the universe. Um, this is what a uh, dark table can work with. This is probably what your screen can show. But Darktable is working with colors that are, are larger. And at the end of the workflow, the output, when I said I'm gonna put an output color profile in sRGB, well, it'll manage to squeeze this triangle, kind of make it smaller, reduce it, and squeeze everything into here at the end. But it's actually working with a larger um, a number of colors. And if you imagine that is all there is in the universe, because we're working in this large space, then actually our eyes can see a lot more. Which is strange, this thing, because we say that this is sRGB and it can't show the other colors, but they're actually shown here. And that is really weird. It's a, something to get your, your head around. These colors that are on my screen, I can see, are actually not in sRGB, so I shouldn't be able to see them. 
So that's why I hid them for you. So it's all very theoretical, this. Um, so imagine, small workspace, sRGB, a lot more colours, Rec 2020. And this is real life. Okay, next thing. Uh, let's go back to this. That's for the colours. Um, now, linear. Linear means that luminosity is unbounded from 0% to uh, one infinity percent. Whereas in display referred, it's limited between zero and 100. And for the same, uh, the same thing will happen with filmic, is that if you get brighter than kind of what would naturally fit on your screen, this is the thing you see is that in scene referred, white doesn't exist anymore. You have to set what white is and the white, it'll just put it to white on your screen. So it's something that's in infinite. There is an advantage, you see, if I show you here, just a quick experiment. If I have an exposure and I set exposure to something ridiculous, there we are, plus eight, 8.6. What's happened, you see, is the screen now cannot display these bright colors here. They've gone white. If I add another exposure on top, the second one. Well, normally you'd think that if the first one is at plus eight and the second one is at minus eight, I'd get everything back. Except for in a display referred um, program like Affinity, well, the white has gone black and everything is lost. And that is the problem with display referred. And I have the example here with, this is in Capture One. I don't want to, um, I don't want to criticize Capture One because I actually use it. I have um, a paid version of it. Um, I use it for my family photos because I find that developing goes much quicker if I've got kind of 100 photos to do, family snapshots, uh, get them straightened, brightened, and sorted out. It's still quicker than Darktable. But just to show you what exactly the same thing, look, this is the cat which I have. And if I increase the exposure, now all this has gone out um, out of the luminosity. So I'm over 100, I'm over one. Let's say that if a display is between zero and one in luminosity, everything that's over one is over 100% and it's gone. Now you'd think that if with the levels tool, I try to bring those back. Well, it does seem to have some sort of kind of way of doing it, but I mean, it's more complicated than what I'm showing you, but what is essentially happening is that the detail here is lost. Now you can't do a second exposure. You can't have a second instance of exposure in Capture One. But in a display referred workflow, once you've gone over 100, then the color is lost, the pixel is lost, and it is set to white, and that's done. Now there is kind of a, I mean, Capture One is clever. It's good software. Um, so it's not kind of losing everything. I could try and get some back, you see here. And the calculations seem to be kind of working out okay. But um, because it's a raw file. Uh, so by combining different modules, I can actually get some things back. So obviously I went over one and have actually come back. So it's not that bad, but it was to, just to show you what the, the, the principle behind um, scene referred is. Let's get back to um, dark table in this picture here. So in a scene referred workflow, the input color profile is linear rec 2020. That should be uh, already set. The other, um, modules are there are the base ones just to get a picture that looks like a photo. White balance should be here in camera reference and that will enable the color calibration to do its work once the photo, the raw picture has been demosaiced and once it's been given a color profile. Um, so now color calibration is the white balance. Um, so if I go to the color chromatic adaptation transform, I can try and see if the software is doing better than the camera. What was there 
initially is what the um, the wire balance the camera set and um, so I had nothing to worry about the invalid it just means that in the color space I am in which is rec 2020 I'm a little far from what would be natural daylight but I'm not worried about that because it looks fine so actually I'm not going to change that very much um, if I want to um, enhance things a little bit maybe um, I could go into the channel mixer and try and get these a little bit whiter so if I have a look at the fur here now the fur is a little bit blue you see so what I could do is reduce a little bit of blue uh, I could reduce a little bit of the blues with the blue channel I'll have to get that a little bit whiter. Now it's gone. The picture's gone a bit darker. I can always try and get that a little bit brighter. I can make the colourfulness go up if I want to get the the greens to pop and the yellows to pop. I can increase a bit of colourfulness on the red, and that's it. Normally, um, now I made a video about the uh, channel mixer. Uh, it's a very important tool for colour and you can do a lot with it honestly you can do a lot with the channel mixer the main thing is to get the general white balance right with the um, color adaptation the chromatic adaptation transform sorry which is either by selecting an area which I could have done here and see what happens I'm not very satisfied with that or by um, I'll do command or control Z to get that back I think also there um, you can either select areas or transform here you can move the sliders a little bit to get them uh, where you want and so the color calibration that is uh, done I'll say once and for all um, it doesn't matter the order you do these in uh, the initial ones uh, just remember to do exposure before filmic uh, I actually quite often do exposure then filmic and then color calibration uh, because I find that if I increase the exposure then sometimes I have a different view on the colors um, here at the bottom we have the uh, color assessment conditions which gives me the white border which I use to adjust the uh, exposure and the white border gives me an idea of what is real white um, especially if you're in a dim uh, dark room at home in front of your computer that will give you a nice assessment of neutral colors white and then the photo so filmic I'll remove the, uh, the light bulb there filmic it's not a module you want to spend a lot of time in it's, it does all the heavy lifting it was or it is the main module a uh, very clever module the main module behind the scene referred idea is that it will take all the exposures you've changed remember what I did here with exposure there it'll take that into account and with filmic you can bring everything back to something which looks like a photo on the screen that is filmic's job but it actually does it on its own you don't need Kind of to go into every option and, and do that the white relative exposure you can actually click on it'll give you an idea it'll look for i think the brightest part of the photo and make sure that it sets the brightest part of the photo to white on the screen that's its job it's mapping it maps the bright point to white and the darkest point to dark that's it and everything else in between um, it does mainly automatically now the black relative exposure is something a little bit more delicate it's um, I was watching um, Aurelian's uh, video again on this module and what he says is that there's no way of doing this really automatically for every photo because black true black doesn't exist in the physical world it's a theoretical black in outer space at minus 273 degrees Kelvin otherwise there's nothing really black what happens on a photo is on the sensor of the camera 
is that in the dark areas you start to get electronic noise that's recorded at the same time as the photons that are hitting the sensor and this black relative exposure is set manually so that you can decide where darkness starts uh, well when noise stops and darkness starts so really the further you go to the right the darker the darks appear and the further left you go here I'm starting to say that here at minus 12 EV which is 12 underneath the zero the orange point which is where you set your exposure here whatever you set your exposure to now is the orange point there which is now zero there we are so forget the number you put in exposure zero is the gray point the midpoint 18 percent relative to the display 50 percent luminosity um, perceptually um, i'm saying that the 12 ev under there is the true black now the problem with that you see is that i'm actually lifting the shadows so i'm probably um, gone far past the point now there's plenty of noise um, that I'm digital noise on the sensor that I'm making appear as color whereas really there wasn't any so anyway nothing to worry about there just just put that to something that looks good where you have your blacks that are black enough not too black not too contrasty because you can always um, make your photo more contrasty afterwards so you have the curve here now um, if you want more detail go and watch the video I made on filmic but what it's saying is that I have decided that my scene in real life had a 10.2 EV dynamic range that's what I'm saying I'm saying that relative to zero I need five EVs in that are lower and at minus five EV it's put it to black on the display and at five EV over the uh, the midpoint I've decided to put that at white so it's probably here for the white and here for the black and I have 10 EVs and that is purely what I decided it's um, because I decided it here and you see if I want to put it if I put to 12 there what happens minus 12 is that I've decided that minus 12 is black so minus 5 now 0 minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 minus 1 minus 5 now is here so it's a dark gray it was probably around here my the minus five the darkest place around here and so now it's a dark gray and it's actually appearing a bit blue and that is probably due to um, some exposure boost it's, it's actually boosting the noise as well so don't get your life too complicated just stick that where it looks good don't bother about the rest you can change the contrast here but you can also change it with other modules you can change the latitude which will give a bit of saturation in the highlights and in the shadows you can do it there you don't have to film it set your black point set your white point if you're not sure what else you're doing well don't do anything because you can do everything else you need somewhere else so really what have I done since I imported the photo well absolutely not much and if you are a bit used to this then um, it should go quite quickly the first points exposure color calibration filmic um, you can do it in that order no problem now we want to enhance the photo now developing a photo is all about color and luminosity um, I can decide to have a high contrast punchy photo where I'll need um, big contrast in luminosity between the blacks and the whites and maybe very punchy colors so I'll maybe I want to have some contrast in the colors between some toned down and muted areas and some very highly saturated areas I can decide to do something very pastel where I can reduce the contrast uh, in luminance and maybe reduce the contrast in colors by desaturating um, some uh, the, the colors it's all up to you um, what I'm going to try to do here um, is just show a couple of modules that can help now what is good in dark table is that we can deal with luminosity contrasts and colors separately 
So let's start with using the tone equaliser. And the tone equaliser here is made for luminosity contrasts. Now, just to show this quickly, the first thing you do want to do, especially if you have this exclamation mark here, is go into masking and go onto the mask exposure compensation and click here on um, the uh, I forgot the name the picker the color picker and that will just give you what will it give you it'll give you the histogram in the right place the histogram was actually pushed to the right I have the histogram in the right place and now this is the contrast I have the dark areas the white areas I actually have here 8 EV of exposure to work with sometimes that is not enough and you can sometimes run into problems on a high dynamic um, photo but that is not the point for this video if I want to add contrast well what do you do you raise the highlights and you lower the shadows yeah, more or less no, I don't want to do that too much I want to add a bit of yeah, a little bit of shadow there this is the the what corresponds to your black point and this is your white point if you change those and you actually you can actually blow out the highlights or you can lift up your shadows like we were doing before so recommended is unless you know what you're doing do not touch these two points just move the curve in between the two show you before and after and I've added some nice contrast to the photo um, for each of the modules I'm showing you in this video each one um, there are videos on I've made a video for about every single one of the ones here this tone equalizer is I think in the um, in the beginners playlist there are plenty of very good videos online for each one um, I'm just skipping quickly through them to show you which ones belong to the um, scene referred workflow and if you see here the tone equalizer is below filmic so we are still in scene referred everything that might appear after filmic you back into display um, so that was for the uh, contrast in tones let's do the contrast in colors so color balance rgb which uh, has appeared recently with version 3.6 i can i have a vibrant slider here if i can want to add a bit of um, colorfulness on low chroma colors this the chroma here be careful with this don't go overboard because otherwise you are going to reach if you push the chroma what's going to happen if I remove that as you push chroma you're moving towards the edge here of the uh, of the color space and these correspond to monochromatic lights with a single waveform so they can have a, a tendency to look a bit fluorescent and fake so be careful with that bit of chroma and uh, so saturation um, if you know the difference saturation will actually push the luminance down a little bit so I can do that I'll do that actually in the midtones just in the midtones so I don't change things too much I don't want to re explain again all this I have a video on color balance RGB but this is one you can use uh, play around with it um, once you've played around with this and you know what it kind of have a feel for what it is play around with the masks here if you like and then go and watch some videos on the uh, module to understand what you're doing um, so I now have adjusted the tonal contrast and I've put some color contrast in what I would like to do is bring out a little bit of the fur here which I've lost a bit of the detail in the fur especially since I did the tone equalizer let's kind of smooth that out I'd like to get that back and maybe add some punchy blue into the eyes and I'll call that a day for this photo uh, so how do I do that? Well, let's go into local contrast. Now, local contrast here does exactly that. It'll give me a bit more detail. Now, don't go overboard with that because it could be really awful. Um, if I lower it on the highlights and add a bit more in the mid-tones, now I've brought a little bit of detail. There is a much better way to do this. 
um, using the new uh, so in version 3.6 it's not there but in 3.8 it will which the, is the new diffuse or sharpen module I'm staying in 3.6 um, and uh, so that should be fine if I want to add a bit of punchy colors into the eyes I can have a new instance of color balance and make a mask and I'm just going to change the color of the eyes so what I usually do is in the masks take a drawn mask I rarely use anything else in um, this path for the draw I rarely use the circles I do uh, paths and then I use parametric uh, masks so let's do this quick and dirty a little bit of a shape around the eye so the idea is it's left click left click left click left click left click left 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 and when it looks fine right click I now have two uh, if I press here I get the mask so now I have two um, selected areas if I want to feather a little bit more just to make sure that the transitions don't get too bad I can move the feathering radius up a little bit but if you're new to um, dark table and you're not very certain about what you're doing I think that this is plenty enough and then I'm going to add some brilliance maybe and I'll add some global chroma and I think that's not a bad look if I do it before and after now you can go overboard on this um, you can actually right click on uh, one of the uh, sliders right click and enter a number say 4.100 and you've gone overboard look at that. oh flashy eyes and that's what happens with chroma so let's bring that down to something reasonable that's not bad the eyes are very blue already that actually gives them a bit of a bit of a punchy character and last thing so here I am still in um, scene referred except for local contrast which is not and that is the advantage of this diffuse or sharpen if I switch on diffuse or sharpen you'll see that diffuse or sharpen the new one will be in the scene referred but for the moment in version 3.6 we don't have a choice local contrast is in display referred um, so looking forward to Christmas with version 3.8 where that is integrated and um, a bit of sharpness maybe a bit of sharpness with a contrast equalizer so on the contrast equalizer there is a preset called sharpen which I think is way overboard but that's, that's me so what I do is I make a global mask and in blend mode uh, I'm in the display referred here wrong ones change the list of blending modes to RGB scene and here you get a nice one which is geometric or harmonic mean which will average it out just nicely and now I get before and after before and after on the sharpening and um, and there we are that is um, scene referred workflow nothing more than that if you look at filmic did I have to change filmic yeah it's fine did I give it too much to eat don't think so um, you may sometimes if you play on contrasts too much you may have to bring your white exposure down a bit you can always play around with it afterwards and see oh now I've done it all you know just before exporting oh what would have been nice well okay it looks better like this and oh look at the black there we are maybe a little bit too black there we are and I've changed it a little bit um, but that's if you're not satisfied um, well there we are that's it for this video I hope it has made things simpler in your mind that scene referred workflow doesn't mean anything more complicated it just means that you can play around as much as you like with um, tonal values that's luminance and filmic will tighten the belt make sure that everything's tucked in correctly before you output and when you output 
this output color profile, when you export, this is on export, um, it also shows on the screen. What you're seeing on the screen is not in, um, I'm not seeing what I'm, what's happening in, uh, in the linear workflow because my screen can't show anything else in this RGB. Um, so what happens is dark table is managing, it's managing what? It's managing the histogram, it's managing what's on the screen to kind of squeeze it into um, what you can actually show on a display and it does that automatically so there's nothing to worry about it will all happen fine with those new modules so go out and learn how to use the modules practice with them play with them stay on these the ones i showed you for a while those are the ones i use 95 percent of the time don't need anything else um, you could uh yeah crop not to crop you want to uh you want there's a couple of small things you might want to do but not with the um developing anyway of the, of the actual photo um so there we are for this video i hope it helped and i'll see you later oh yes just as an afterthought um well here's the cat edited um well i took my time to do that yesterday um just a bit better than what I've just done with you um, it, but if you look here on the right at the modules I used you have exactly those that I've shown you just the diffuse or sharpen here which is the new one that I'm practicing with and that is really helpful um, so that's one thing just to show that what I show you is actually what I do and the second one um, what happens if I have a new instance of exposure I'm going to do a right click and add five stops of exposure. Um, I wanted to show this at the beginning of the video, but I forgot, so it's now. Oh, look at that. Plus five EV. Um, filmic. Our guard dog has our belt. Um, that one has exploded. Um, but what I can do is have a new instance. And see what happens if I add minus five, like I did in Affinity Photo that didn't work. Minus five exposure here. Now it's a bit slow because diffuse or sharpen here is actually quite a slow module. But you see, bingo. Plus five, minus five, come back to zero as if nothing happened. I haven't lost a pixel. So that is your scene referred workflow. Brilliant. Okay, if you've liked this video, um, Please subscribe, leave some comments, leave your thoughts, whatever you like. I'll try and answer. Um, I'm actually enjoying now kind of um, having chats with, with, with some of you who want to. Um, like the video. Um, that's just for my ego. Thank you. Uh, I find it pleasant. Uh, and uh, there we are. I'll see you. Uh, I'll see you soon.